Uh, much better performance uh, tonight than we had the other night in Iowa, and that was good to see, um, our ability to bounce back. Um, I loved the first half, how we really tried to get out and push the pace and run uh, in transition. Um, you know, I thought uh, we got help from a lot of kids. Uh, Mac obviously had a very special night. Um, and and that, was, that, was, that was a tough matchup. Um, you know, that young lady is, is big and did a great job with, um, you know, McKenzie as far as not allowing anything easy. And so all of Mac's points just came off of whether she's in the right place at the right time. Uh, and her teammates found her, uh, but Mac worked hard also uh, to to uh, find ways to score the ball for us. Um, I thought Sarah obviously looked good tonight. Sid uh, Yarden I thought looked uh, much better. Um, you know, right now uh, Chloe is you know doing a great job for us, but um, you know she looked a little tired out there. I thought tonight and. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the fact that she has to guard the other team's best player, and then she has to come run our offense and push the pace. But um, happy we kept the turnovers under 10, or at 10, I guess. Uh, we did. We were able to out-rebound them. That was one of the categories that we did want to win, um, you know, since we haven't been rebounding the ball at the level we need to. Uh, but, um, you know, really gr proud of our guys and, and, and how we, um, we came back uh, from a tough night the other night. Terry McKenzie said uh, in talking about the last few days since the Iowa game said that the film session coming out, out of that game was not particularly fun mm -hmm. and kind of just a lot of hard truths being thrown around. Just what did you kind of take from, you know, what were you going thinking just going into all of that? Like what, what message were you really trying to send there? How did you see your team respond to that over the last few days coming out of the Iowa game? Well, they, they responded. Um, you know, it, there were, you know, um, we, we try to really pride ourselves in being truth tellers uh, to our players and uh, I expect them to be truth tellers to each other as well. And, um, you know, what caught me um, maybe during the moment and certainly after watching the game, um, you know, Seth, I think I was more frustrated, um, Yes, with the loss, but I just thought we were we underperformed. I thought um, we looked disconnected. I thought at times we looked uninspired, and uh, that was frustrating. We didn't build this program on those things. We built this program on our toughness, our grittiness. In the early days when um, there were, you know, 1,500, 2,000 people out there watching us, and we would come up short, one of the – one of the, the things that they would always say about Indiana women's basketball is although they lost the game, they played to the very end, right? This is a team that you got to show up because they're going to fight you tooth and nail regardless of the talent, regardless of what's happening inside the game. Um, they're, they're always going to be that team. And, um, you know, my frustration came in, in not seeing that. And I wanted to remind them of, you know, how this thing has been built. And it's been built off of those those things, uh, those core beliefs that we gotta, regardless of the scoreboard, we're gonna play we're gonna play it out, and we're gonna end the game the right way. Um, and so um, that was that was my message. Of course, there was things in the game that we watched that were teaching points. Um, you know, and again, the first half wasn't terrible. Um, now, the turnovers were not good, um, and that got us in a kind of a funky, uh, you know, there was no flow to the game for us offensively. Uh, but, you know, we, we stayed there pretty, pretty close. Um, and even at halftime, we, we were like, we're in, a, we're in a good position. You know, Kate had to hit two really tough threes. Um, what we can't do is come out, and we got to get the first stop, and we didn't do that. And then on the third, I just thought it was a terrible third quarter for us. So, um, like I said, it was a hard lesson to learn, but um, um, I think that they, we all listened to everything that everyone had to say about that experience. We flushed it and we moved on. Terry, you talked about today being a bounce back performance and the McKenzie obviously said about learning from Iowa. I mean, tonight you guys shot 59% from the floor, uh, 23 steals, 11 threes. Just how important is it performing yeah. like today? Uh, just to sort of flip the page. Yeah, and there's no doubt. Uh, we have to. We're a good basketball team. Um, and um, we weren't the other night, but this is a really good basketball team uh, when they're connected, when they're uh, playing fast, uh, when they're sharing the ball. 
when they are intentional about what their assignments are defensively and they're really super focused on that. Um, you know, and so uh, no doubt, you know, we wanted to, um, uh, and you guys have heard me say this before, you know, when you have performances like we had the other night at Iowa, the best remedy for that is to get back on the floor as quickly as you can. And, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I liked, uh, I liked their focus. I liked how they came out today um, and, um, and executed, you know, quite frankly, they executed the things that we've been talking about. You guys were really able to contain Mara Braun, especially mm -hmm. in that first half, held her scoreless. How right. happy were you with that and then just the defensive performance? Yeah, I, you know, I thought Chloe obviously was, uh, and maybe that's why Chloe was a little bit more fatigued looking in the second half, because she has she has to, uh, you know, expend so much energy um, on on guarding, uh, you know, kids of, of her talent. And, um, and so I thought Lexi did also a great job. Um, and so, yeah, we were, uh, we were happy, but we knew the second half, you know, she was she was still uh, capable of coming out and, you know, starting to heat up in which she, uh, you know, we lost her on a, just an easy up screen off of two out of bounds back-to-back uh, -back plays. But, um, you know, I thought for the most part we, we did a really good job uh, at, at keeping her as quiet uh, as we can because, like I said, she's had some unbelievable performances for them. She's a really, really nice player. And, um, you know, she's... She's one of the best guards, you know, I think, right now in the big. Uh, you mentioned Yarden, um, said she's a little better tonight. Yeah. Um, has the foul trouble that she's been in kind of consistently in the first half kind of prevented her from sort of yeah, which kind kind of, of finding yeah. the, the rhythm she needs to kind of get in? Yeah, you know, because she, uh, I, I thought she looked, um, you know, uh, a little lighter on her feet than she has been. You know, I feel like she's, um, it, she just she hasn't been moving as well. She hasn't been, uh, you know, playing with um, a lot of energy as of late. And I thought tonight she really came out and she kind of looked like she had a little bit of, uh, you know, pep in her step. And that was great to see. It's just unfortunate that uh, she got herself in foul trouble because, you know, she was she was doing some some really good things. I thought defensively, yes, but also being aggressive, you know, offensively and not turning the ball over. And so it was unfortunate that she did get in that foul trouble because I do think we would have left her on the floor uh, and she would have, you know, um, continued to, you know, uh, you know, just show bright spots uh, throughout. Terry, at risk of you being asked this before, and you spoke about the, the fast break, there was that period at the end, towards the end of the first quarter where I think Yarden had a cross-court pass to initiate the break. Yeah. Chloe had one. Mackenzie had a steal and initiated a break. And of course, Sarah and Sydney are perfectly capable of doing the same. Mm -hmm. Can you illustrate the pressure that it puts on the on the opposing defense when you have five starters on the floor who can all initiate a Right, break? yeah. Um, you know, Todd, it's part of, you know, what, what we do and what we practice every day and what we emphasize every day. And, and um, you know, I do. I think it puts pressure on other uh, teams. Uh, you know, we really preach made or misses. We want to get that thing out. Um, and, and less dribbles, more passing uh, up the sideline, across the street, as we call it. Max, a fantastic runner. She puts a lot of pressure on defenses as well because of her commitment to running the floor. Um, and so, uh, you know, when, when they started to, to make a, a little bit of a run at us in the third quarter, I reminded them, like, this is what got us the lead. We got to, those rebounds, we got to get it and we got to, we got to push the pace again. And so, um, I thought there was a couple minutes there in the third where we just, we did that. Um, but, um, it was good to see because we didn't have any of those the other night. It seemed like we were stuck in mud, you know, for most of the game. Coach, Sarah has been struggling kind of in Big Ten play as of late, 5 of 11 from three today. How's it, how important is it for her to get back on track for the team's success? Yeah, it's, it's extremely important. You know, um, you know, one of the things I think is that we pride ourselves in is the balance. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have so much confidence in her, and I'll continue to say it, so much confidence in Sid and Yarden and Chloe. Um, you know, to, to and Bo, um, you know, to, to be able to come in and, and shoot the ball. Um, and um, and so, yeah, it was great to see her, see a couple of those go in tonight. 
uh, you know, and, and we talked a lot about uh, after the Iowa game, you know, when things aren't going well for us offensively, there's still another end of the floor that we have to be committed to playing. Um, but um, you know, it, was, it was great to see, and some of those were in and out too. Um, the, the one I think right before half, um, you know, uh, we, we got her a good look and it just kind of went in and out, but um, it, was, it was great to see. Um, Mackenzie was saying that the that the Iowa film session was tough just with the nature of the loss. I'm kind of curious what it was kind of like to be in that room with the emotion and uh, if you held back at all. Oh, no, I never hold back. Um, and it wasn't real. Um, yeah, it was it spirited? No doubt. Um, you know, but it, it needed to be said. You know, oftentimes I think, and, and we're a team that um, I think we have great chemistry. I think they're friends on and off the floor. Uh, but I do think that at times it's, it's, it's difficult to be able to tell your teammate exactly what you think and what they need to hear. Um, and so uh, that's what I'm here for. And so um, I'm able to um, tell them individually, uh, remind them individually of uh, their role and how important they are to this team and remind them of what we need them to do and what the expectations are and what the standards are. Um, and so that's really what it was about. Um, and, um, you know, nobody, l let me just make, sh make this clear. Yes, uh, our staff was frustrated and disappointed, uh, but uh, so were those kids. You know, there, there's no doubt that um, they, were, um, they were not happy.